peace and love among all beings of the universe. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaskar, Namaskar. Welcome to Satsang. Player is pain. All players and in pain. And those players are only players of the sight through eyes, respective object. Eyes, sight, respective object, like <clears throat> for example, a moth likes to embrace the flame of the candle, object of love, <laughs> object of the sight, and it goes to join it, embrace it, kiss it, because it finds a player to go to the flame and it ends in its destruction. <laughs> so all players that belong to the sight will end in <coughs> sorrow and suffering. Next is smell. <coughs> smell nose, smell, object of the smell. The bee goes to the flower because she likes the <laughs> fragrance of this, of the flower, particular bee goes to the flower and she doesn't leave it. And that flower folds in the night, lost. So all those people who are fond of this smell will also end in unhappiness. Then sound, music, ear, sound, object. As the people who hunt the deers in the forest, some of them who go to the forest and see those people who hunt, they play some sort of music and the deer from all around, they come near the place, hearing the music, and they shook them. This is how I have seen myself. And then taste, mouth, object of taste, like fish, always tasting, as you know. And it touches the hook of the angle of the fisherman and in suffering loses her life. So those who are fond of taste, surely one day will have unhappiness in the end because of the taste, any kind of taste will end in suffering. So, sight, smell, touch now. <laughs> this is all one, we all have. Sight we have, and then smell we have, and then hearing we have, mouth, touch we have, and then touch. Touch means hand, no? Taste and touch. Touch is, you know, how they catch the elephants. The elephants are caught only, they make a decoy of elephant, she-elephant, dig a well, and on that they lay some grass. On that grass they make 
a she elephant decoy of she elephant paper and the elephants come to go near this elephant touch and it falls into the well <clears throat> and the people who deal in the elephants this is how they take the elephants and remove their tusk trade of the ivory and then they sell the elephants also this is now of course it's banned in india but how the elephants were caught in india so these are the things in pleasure and in pain how to avoid there's no other way to avoid this thing unless you aspire for self knowledge when you attain self knowledge there'll be end of all these sufferings sorrow and perhaps the cycle of birth and death once for all it will cease when you attain self knowledge this appearance false appearance will end as when you dream and in the dream you are attacked by some some tigers call it or some robbers call it in the dream and you are much in trouble so when you wake up all this is over it was a reality that trouble was reality that pain that suffering was unreal but during the dream it was as real as in the waking state but when you wake up all is over it was a dream and like this this is also a dream there is no difference between dream and waking state because in the dream also we see name far we see mountains we see rivers we see animals we see birds and we see forests trees everything likewise here in waking state also we see name and form what else so there's no difference so to wake up from this long standing dream we have to aspire for self knowledge so that we wake up from this dream how to do it many ways have been prescribed many practices methods yogas i don't think it has worked successfully as the only one way is to know thyself which is here and now for that to know yourself you have not to do any kind of practice you need not go anywhere because it is not located far away from you self atman is here and now and you have to be free of ego your desires and habit of searching for the pleasures this one's who can avoid for instant of time you will get rid of this mind mind is ego mind is past mind is samsara mind is sorrow and suffering so you have to strike at the root of the mind without which you cannot be happy you cannot be at peace and you can do it 
if you resolve to do it, you can do it without any kind of effort. You have only got to do or got not to do. I don't think to do anything. Neither I tell you not to do anything, not not to do anything. <coughs> Simply I tell you to keep quiet and don't make any effort. Do not stir a single thought. Don't think, don't make any effort. And during this span, question, who am I? And if you can do, you are free. If you don't, the world process is in front of you for your enjoyment. <laughs> and it will stay. <laughs> Millions of years you have spent here. Thirty-five millions years you have already gone through to be here in satsang. So you are welcome. We are going to do it because we have got not to do anything here. Simply stay quiet. Not to think, not to exert. Simply, simply find out who am I. And this I is not located even feet away from you, inches away from you. It is here and now, even before you speak of I, it is previously there. Before the rise of I, it is always there. It is not the sound that I speak about. It's not the verb, it's not that language, it's not the I that I speak about. It is something beyond this, beyond any language, beyond any word, and that is your own being, unless you identify yourself with your own being, you cannot be happy, you cannot be at peace. You have to go and come and repeat it for millions of years. So this is up to you. This is up to you. This is the only way they say. The sages have said it, you see. Sages have said it, you are all free. You are all enlightened. You are not suffering. How can you suffer? Suffering belongs to the mind, and mind cannot touch it. Mind cannot reach that place where you are seated, where you abide where you are living. In that place, sun even does not shine, nor the moon, nor the stars, where not even the thought can reach, untouched, unthought about, beyond comprehension. That is the place you have to direct your mind towards it. Direct your mind towards your own self and don't think. That's all is called freedom. And this is peace, happiness, beauty, love. So, do as you please. <laughs> oh.
yesterday when you were speaking about the math you touch deep in my heart and tear come to my eyes can you help me to disappear in the flame my name is shalaba shalaba what is shalaba <laughs> no shalaba then your place is go towards the frame only if you are not do you speak english what's your mother tongue spanish spanish Okay, math is one who, before knowing his name, he is already finished. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know it. He has love. He has only love for the flame. So instantly he is called somebody. When he rises, when he comes to being, he goes towards the flame. And during the time of flame, only it appears <laughs> and destroy. and creation and destruction doesn't take time if it is a real math therefore if you are real seeker of truth it doesn't take time for you when you give rise to freedom when a seeker a true person give rise to i want to be free there and then he is free understand like a math otherwise this desire of freedom will come from where tell me from the mind from the mind desire for freedom must come from where desire for freedom must come from where the wave must rise from where from inside wave must rise from where wave anybody can translate Spanish into English into Spanish <laughs> nearby. From the ocean. Huh? From the ocean. No. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> ocean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> from the ocean. Wave must rise from the ocean and fall into and fall into the ocean. Ocean. That's all. <laughs> Yes, wave will not rise from ocean and fall into gulf. It will not desert. It will not. <laughs> If it rises from desert and falls in desert, that wave is mirage, like this. This math is not a math. Who wants to ask someone how to destroy? <laughs> This math is not a math. Who asks someone, tell me where is the flame? Like this, when this desire for freedom comes, already one is free. What else you can see? <laughs> this desire alone is freedom. That's how I believe. In this desire, all around, what one one will see. i want to be free what else one could see in this desire hmm nothing eh? <laughs> so for the math everywhere there is fire flame only math it's not a math something else <laughs> What is it that puts my fear 
fearful mind back. Back. Fearful mind I puts you back is only desire. I want this. So when you don't give rise to this desire and you go back at the source, as you have gone already in the source, our desires are fulfilled. You know? Our desires are fulfilled. It's not that you have rejected, but they are fulfilled, you see. You don't want anything. The king needs nothing, you see. The emperor of the country needs nothing. How? He doesn't want, I want this apartment, I want this piece of land, because everything belongs to him. So you have to become a king, not a beggar. When you want something, when you go out, you are a beggar. When you make desire, you are a beggar. So why to beg? Why not to see that you are a king itself? Hmm. Begging is begging is always troublesome, you know, to beg. Once there was a king and one beggar came to him to beg some food, something. The king <coughs> The king was saying some prayers, prayers, and the beggar was waiting for a long time. He is still worshipping his god, and then after worship they say, you see, they, they do like this thing, and the Hindus do like this thing, the Muslims do like this thing, isn't it? And Christians also do like this thing, you see means give me my daily food. That is, you go to the church and ask for daily food. Muslims also, they want, you see, give me, send me to heaven. So this is what they beg. And this man now is finished, this, his worship is finished. The beggar is going. And then he called him, no, he says, I was busy in my puja or worship. You come, I will give you. He said, no, no, I, I am a beggar. But I thought you are a king, but you are also begging. <laughs> so what a beggar will ask from a beggar? Now I will ask someone from whom you are begging. Therefore, I don't want your anything. So everybody is a beggar, you see, if you have a desire. You are beggar, you see. But you beg from one from whom everybody is begging, you see. When you go there, I explain to you, the throne is ready. Simply sit on it. And what is this throne? Throne of emptiness. Sit on that throne. Or beg, two things. <laughs> that is your choice. Everybody is a beggar. You tell me, have you seen anyone who doesn't want anything in the world? Have you seen anyone who doesn't want anything? Have you met that man? You start from your father. He needed your mother <laughs> because he wanted her. And then you are the product of desire. Isn't it? <laughs> so you have also started the same desires. So this is, you have inherited, no? You have inherited begging. This begging bowl you have inherited from your father and they from their fathers, and this continued. <laughs> And it will continue, you see, unless you stop it, you know. You throw this bag, you throw the bowl away <laughs> and say, I'm no more beggar. No more beggar means I don't want anything. What do you lose? One side, if you don't want anything, here is the throne ready for you. 
and you are <laughs> begging, you will not satisfy. I have a question. Uh, no, let me apply this, reply this thing, question you will enjoy. Then after that, you stay here. But this is very important. Yes. I can't find it. Hmm? I can't find it. So what is that question? Well, you asked this gentleman here that he has to, he has the choice between the throne of emptiness or the life of desire. Hmm. So, to choose the throne of emptiness is also a desire. It's a desire yeah. to choose the throne of emptiness. So, if, the, if you choose the throne of emptiness, it is also coming out of desire mm. to want emptiness, to want enlightenment, whatever we call it. So, who is making that choice? Mm. And yeah. how to go beyond choice? It doesn't matter what we choose, as long as it is desire, yes. it is in the realm of duality or <clears throat> whatever we call it. So this is the question. The question is now, desire or choice for emptiness is always, also is a desire. That's what your question is. Mm -hmm. Actually, I will tell you, when you go into the forest, one thorn runs into your foot. Generally it happens, isn't it? When you go out, many times it happened to me also, to the forest, and then when you see the two spiked, very sharp thorns, if you go here, in this forest also, they run into your foot. So at that time, what will be my desire to remove? Because it's very painful, I can't walk now. So from the same thing, same bush, of thorns, I pick up another thorn and remove this thorn and then throw away both. <laughs> Taking out this thorn with another thorn and then throw away both and walk free. So this desire of freedom is a desire also. Then you take out, take another thorn to remove this desire for freedom also. And what is that desire? For freedom is a desire. Bondage was also a desire. Pain, suffering was also. To remove that, you made use of this thorn to remove the bondage. When having removed, throw away the other thorn also, along with the same thorn which ran into your foot. Both are gone. When both are gone, this thorn which took out, the other thorn of bondage has done its work. You don't need any one of them. You are free now. <coughs> no desire for, even from freedom, no desire even for happiness. You, have, you needed happiness, the thorn of happiness, to remove your pain. It is over. So you don't want even happiness. Both are thrown away. That is a state, a very rare state. And that person is known as Avadhuta. Avadhuta, that person is known as, you see who doesn't want anything, not even kingdom, you see. <laughs> there was one king, a wise king, he wanted freedom, enlightenment. For that purpose, he was always thinking how to be free. Then <clears throat> he heard from someone, there is a man, he is, he is completely realized man, enlightened man, and he is in your kingdom only. 
then he sent emissaries, <coughs> people, to find that man, who is this man. So all the four directions, he sent a column of army men to find who is this man. And, uh, and everybody reported, we don't find any man. And then <coughs> he called the person, you said, there is a man, yes, yes. But my people have gone up to the frontiers of my kingdom, they have not found. And then he said, no, he is living just, just a few yards from your palace itself, there. So someone had gone and seen this man. <coughs> he was a cart's man, cart driving, pulling cart, you see sitting under the cart and making rice, boiling rice, you see. And then he asked, this name was also given to this, are you this man? He is busy himself and not caring for this thing. So he said, it was reported to the king and the king went with elephants, elephants loaded with jewelry, fruits, everything, you see. And then his queens also followed him on the elephants. So he prostrated before that man. And then he stood before him and he said, I want knowledge. I want freedom. Please teach me. He said, yes, you are a good man. You have come here. How long you have been a king? He said, 30 years, you see. Okay, then you stay here at my place under the cart. You look after my rice and I will go and sit in your place. You see. Now you take rest here. I will take rest on the throne. And king readily accepted it because what he was getting around the kingdom, he was, even then he was he was very jealous with the other state, which was richer than him. Always in fear also, these people will come and invade me. Fear was there, <coughs> then desire was there, then jealousy was there, you see. So now at least I am very happy, you see. I am very happy. So this man goes there and sits on the throne and the ministers are helping him. The same man, he was a nude man sitting on the throne. So everybody was very happy, very generous, and all the kingdoms around became his friends because he has no pain in his mind and no jealousy for the other people who are richer kings. So they became all the states around him became very friendly, you see. And now this man goes there. Now, you go there, even, even governing a kingdom, you will not get into the trouble because you know this thing, what you haven't done. Nobody was there, you were begging and then bringing rice and cooking. What a life it is. So king was very happy, he went back to his place, you see. This is how, you see, the things has to happen, you see, like, with your own experience, then go to the teacher, he will tell you how to be happy, not simply listening from someone, it doesn't happen. You get into this experience, as this king has done, lived a very beggarly life, you see, as a beggar, then king doesn't make any difference, you see. So otherwise there will be desires in you, as long as there's a desire in the mind, it is, it is meant that you are keeping a serpent serpent in your pocket, any time it will sting you. So this desire is worse than a serpent, snake. Snake once stings and you die. Desire again and again stings, again and again you revive. And this will continue for ages, you see. Therefore, don't touch this desire. Don't touch the desire, you see. And this is the way to be happy because when you are not having any desire during sleep, you are happy. Nobody is unhappy during sleep.
when he says, I am in pain, he must be in the waking state. So like that, you sleep now. This is called knowledge. When the world is awake, you sleep. And what they do not know, where they are awake, you sleep. They are awake in desires. That's called waking. You sleep. And perhaps this kind of man will give happiness to many people in the world. After two billion years, one becomes a human being, otherwise lower species, animals, birds, worms, yes, and then plant life, then marine life. So it takes two billion years to have this farm, and you must be very lucky to be counted among six billion people tonight, yes. One, one of the six billion people, human beings, population is six billion. And how many fishes are there? How many mosquitoes are there? <laughs> how many pigs are there? So first of all, you are very lucky to be among two billion people. Among two billion people, you can have survey country-wise whole country has not produced even one person who got freedom. You can see, maybe very few people, you see, the country-wise survey, not more than one person in a country, and some countries, there are 400 countries here, and among the 400 countries, there are no 400 enlightened beings. There should be. If one person in a country, they should be known. Not that, you see. We have to look behind to find out some. Gautam was born 2,600 years ago. Go behind. Why should we go back to the past and pick up one Buddha? Everybody is entitled to become Buddha. He was a man. He was just an ordinary man having wife, son, kingdom. He could get freedom, why not everybody could get, you see. But we have to do as he did. Middle of night, a thought comes to him. <laughs> What's all this, samsara? What is all this? Because some astrologers have told his father, this boy who is born today will not be a prince. He is destined to be a monk, enlightened person, but very famous man he will become in the world. Therefore, he has put him into the wall of the enjoyments, palace. He cannot go out, just kept inside and all young girls to be around him. No old person, no diseased person at all was allowed. Very handsome girls were around him to take care of this man. So one day he asked his horseman, what is outside the wall? You see, the wall is there. Everybody has his walls with limitations. But his first question was, in this direction, he called his name, the man who used to give him horse riding within the palace, you see. So his name was Achanna, even his name is known. Being a horseman of this man, even his name is survived today, you see. He say, called him, I want to go and see what's outside the, outside the wall. But he was not allowed to take him out. And there are guards and sentries at the gate. Gate is closed from inside. And then he woke up. And then 
his wife is there, son also there, and then he says, I have to go. You can't disobey my command. And then he took him, and somehow the sentries also agreed. They opened, but they said, you have to come back before the daybreak. He said, yes, that I will come back. So he goes there, and outside he saw a man who is coughing. Coughing. He said, why this man is coughing? And and he says, he's, he's a sick man. He's sick. What is sickness? <laughs> a man, when he coughs, he cannot breathe well, so he has to cough is one of the symptoms of disease. So he's a sick man. Will you also fall sick? Yes, Master, and you too. Next he goes. So one man is hunchbacked cannot walk up straight. Why this man is half bent? He says, Master, due to old age, man becomes hunchbacked when he is after ninety years. He becomes like this thing, can't straight, the spine is not straight, you see. You will also become old? Yes, Master, and you too. <laughs> then he saw, one man is being carried and others are crying behind. Then he said, why these women are crying behind and men and he is taken on a stretcher on the shoulders of other people? Who is this man? Having flowers around him, face open. He is dead. What is death? Everybody who does not breathe one day due to sickness, due to old age, due to accident, he dies. So when a man is dead, he is taken to burial ground or to cremation ground, you see, to cremate him. And you also will die one day? Yes, Master, you too, he says. <laughs> Drive me back. So, on way back, he saw one man seated under a tree with a, he said, stop, let me get down. And he got down, and this man was glowing and shining with happiness and bliss. He says, this man, I am here, he doesn't speak to me. Oh, Master, he doesn't care. He has left the whole world. Therefore, he is happy, he is enjoying within himself. Uh, here was the question and he decided, this man is the best among the others, you see. So he went back and Yashodra, still sleeping, Rahul suckling the mother, you see. So he goes and decides, one step out of the threshold and one inside. Decision, you see, strong decision. And then one step, oh, this boy is going to be orphan tomorrow, no father. And Yashodra will find no husband tomorrow morning if I leave. They have to see the play of the mind, return back. And don't go out. Nobody should go out, leave his wife and son like this thing. It's not dharma. Go back and lie, lie down again. No, one step was very strong, which was outgoing step, you see. And he didn't look behind. He went out. So this is how a man has become Buddha, not looking behind, as you say, my bad habits, my mind, I think. You are not to look behind. All this is mind. All this is mind, you see. And you have to win it with very strong mind. Otherwise, there is no hope to be happy. Always you will be born in the very low wombs, again and again. 
no end. And now you are lucky, you are in such and don't fail back, you see. You have got to do it now. Don't look behind. These behinds you have looked many times, you see. What is it that you have not seen? What is it that you have not enjoyed till today? If you are satisfied, go back and sleep with Yashodra again. <laughs> Otherwise, go. If you go, perhaps you will help the generations to come, and this is being done, you see. At your sacrifice, not only you will win freedom, you will be one who will help others. As the boat goes again and again, this side and that side, help other people to cross the river. And this is how you will cross the ocean. Ocean can be crossed by ships, but this ocean of samsara cannot be crossed. You need a very strong raft, and that raft is satsang, you see, without which you are not helped. Crocodiles, whales around, sharks are looking at your face. And these habits are sharks, you see. <laughs> so you do as you wish. Nobody compels no one. If his time has come, he will get up and see what's outside the wall. Not everybody. Everybody remains within the wall's limitations of the mind. <laughs> Thomas. Last year when I sat with you, my longing for freedom disappeared. Old latent tendencies seem to be still which which keep my mind working and outward going. Do these tendencies spin out by by themselves? <coughs> Who's Thomas? Is it got Thomas from no, not from Bhagavad What is your question? Mm -hmm. I said with you for longing for freedom that disappear. Okay, freedom disappeared. Then what else is now there? Latent tendencies seem to be still there. Okay. Mm. Mm. Which keep my mind working and outward going. You see, the tendencies, these are the tendencies. On your picture, <laughs> these are the tendencies, and then you are holding the tail of the snake, and you are on the hood of the snake. This is the answer. You are on the hood of all tendencies. 
that have been biting you and killing you. And isn't it? And now the same tendencies are prostrating before you. So let them dance. <laughs> the same tendencies that were troubling you hmm, become your maidens, maidens, you know, maidens. And thus utilize our services like these, you see. But you have to stand like this on the hood of the snake. So let them come and help you. They will not trouble you. After all, you need to live and you can't avoid tendencies. There's a tendency, I want to eat food, I will go to a good restaurant. Go there, this is a tendency. <laughs> what trouble is there? No trouble. Hmm? This also tendency, let me go to Lucknow and have satsa. Good tendency. You like this, you see. Yeah. This tendency has helped you. Like this, I brought you here and you came. Simply follow the tendency itself. <laughs> so you keep this with you. Stand on the hood of tendencies and keep the tail of the tendencies in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> he will be happy to see it, you know. He will understand the meaning, you know. <laughs> Good, no? <laughs> Good dance. <laughs> yes, you can play. You have gone to any circus, you know, the young girl comes and opens the mouth of the lion and puts her head into the lion's mouth. Haven't you seen? Yeah, you have seen. And how she has controlled this lion. And if you see a lion, not even seeing, if you see a roar of the lion in the forest, what will you do? What will you do? Just a roar of the lion, if you hear in the forest, what will you do? You will change your pant, I think. <laughs> That's all you got. <laughs> and now, when this girl comes, open the mouth, put the head in. <laughs> Everybody claps. <laughs> you call your tendencies, have a conference with them. <laughs> yes. Call around, have a conference, you sit in center. I thank you very much. May you take me next after Lucknow? Yeah. <laughs> I call them. He looks beautiful, eh? You come here, you see? What is this? What is this tendency? What is this tendency? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Then when all the tendencies, when all the tendencies become your maidens, then you play the flute. <laughs> Thank you.